Today I will be joined by Lindsay L. She is in Nashville. She is a country singer, songwriter, superstar. Uh, she plays guitar. She's amazing. She's beautiful. Very talented. Pop for Food Takeover is where we make up food on the spot with whatever the guest has in their fridge. Snickles butt will be part of the scene. <laughs> Hi! Hi ladies! How are you? I'm great. How, how are you? I'm great. How's your quarantine going? Oh, you know, it's going. This is the most fun of quarantine, this live show I'm doing. Girl, this live show is so fun. Thanks. <laughs> like, I love the idea. I think it's awesome. It's worked out pretty well. We've come up with some pretty fun recipes just with whatever people have. So No kidding. Yeah. So so, so this is Lindsay L, everybody, if you don't know her. She's Hi, here in Nashville right now, right? I am, yep. Yeah. The scene in Nashville is not as lively as it usually is, though, is it? It is not. I mean, the <laughs> scene anywhere isn't. Oh, my gosh, Ben Zucker from Germany. Everybody, the whole world is on here. What up, Ben? Yeah, um, it's cool, right? Yeah, the scene in Nashville is not as lively as it normally is. I mean, but L.A., like, this past weekend, things are starting to open up a little bit more in Nashville. But L.A. is still pretty shut down, right? We are, yeah. You can only do curbside pickup still. Like a lot of the retails, curbside pickup. The malls aren't open. Yeah, it's gotcha. It, but people are at the beaches. I will say. Well, that's good. Yeah, I but I don't know. I don't maybe... know if they're following the rules. I'm a rule follower. <laughs> yeah, I know. Me too. It's the you Canadians know. in us. I know. <laughs> well, Lindsay is Canadian. She's a country superstar. If you don't know her, go check her out. Go follow her. Go listen to her new song. I don't love you. And we'll talk a little bit about music and food as we go, but let's just dive in, yeah? Because I see you're standing in, in your kitchen. No promises to what's in my fridge or my pantry, but. Well, give us, let's look at the fridge first, shall we? Okay. Can I start? Okay. Here's my fridge. All right. So I have some butternut squash. Some right. Here, I'll give you the, the vast look. Some cauliflower. I have a lot of vegetables, Lauren. Cucumber, asparagus is in there, spinach, tomatoes, zucchini, sprouts, dates, lots okay. of celery. Is that what's at the bottom? Celery? That big tub? Yeah. Celery. I juice it, so I buy it, like, in crazy amounts. Yeah, you got to. Okay. Um, um, then I have, like, tahini, oh, yeah, tahini, coconut aminos. Uh, hemp milk, coconut milk, tons of hot sauces. I see garlic. Garlic. And then we'll go over here to the pantry. Okay. We'll yeah. go veggie. Veggie heavy. Um, mm. I have like, okay, chickpeas. I have lots of, I stocked up for quarantine. So yeah. like chickpea pasta. I think I have like lentil pasta. Let's see. I have jackfruit. Black beans, Black beans. Oh, some lentils, oh, quinoa. Cool. Well, all right. Well, we have coconut now. Yeah, you've got a good stuff. You've got quite the staples happening. Let me ask you what, what, like, what have you eaten today? What do you want to avoid? Do you want to avoid anything or? No, I'm game for whatever you want to do. Mm, I feel like we should use the cauliflower. What okay. were you gonna do? What were you gonna do with it? Uh, I hadn't really decided. I was probably. I'm so boring sometimes. I was probably just gonna roast it. Yeah. Um, or I have an air fryer, and sometimes I like stick it in that. But okay. I, I have no plans. No plans. All right. Either the squash or the, the cauliflower. We could make like a pasta sauce with either, actually. You can actually cook it okay. and blend it with like, do you have like nutritional yeast? Uh, I don't know if I have nutritional yeast. I just ran out. Do you have, you have the amino, so that's good. Do you I do have, have aminos, yeah. You have garlic, so that's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You I love how you're coming up with this on the spot. This it's amazing. insane. What if I screw it up, Lindsay? <laughs> I think it's amazing. We've been doing a lot of pasta sauces, but I do think transforming vegetables into pasta sauce is nice. Or we could just roast it and make a different sauce if you want to make chickpea pasta. We could roast the cauliflower. I don't know. Let's just start cutting up the cauliflower. Cool. Do you have stuff in your freezer? Uh, yeah. Let's see what's in my freezer. 
I have more vegetables probably. <laughs> this is, good. This is veg. quarantine me. I have mango. Mm -hmm. I like freeze a lot of fruit, throw in smoothies. Let's see. More cauliflower, broccoli. Um, oh my God, you have those veggie spirals. We made those with Lance Bass last week. Oh my gosh, I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> these are amazing. Okay, These are well, amazing. You could make you could make one other time what we made. We did half spaghetti, half butternut squash pasta. That is so awesome. Okay, you're so good with vegetables. Like, what do you normally eat? Like, you seem very you eat very simply. You're not like I eat very simply. I eat like a lot of black beans, lentils, chickpeas, and vegetables. <laughs> do you like? Kind of how do you normally season stuff? Um, I use a lot of tahini. I use hot sauces. I use like. Garlic, onion, um, I, I mean, I could show you my, my yeah. spices are like. Yeah, uh -huh. we'll use some spices. Okay, here's what I think. Let's like roast the cauliflower and we'll have bits of roasted cauliflower on your pasta, but we'll also blend half of it into the sauce for the pasta. So it's almost like doing it two ways. That sounds amazing. Okay. That sounds so, amazing. So we got to start cutting that into four and we'll have to get out a pot of water to boil. And then you can pick what pots that you want to use. Oh my gosh. Okay. So cut <laughs> cauliflower and get a pot of water. Yeah. How do you guys feel about this idea? It's like cauliflower two ways pasta. Okay. I'm going to put it in the comment. Everybody in quarantine has tons of pasta in there. In their pantry. The best, yeah, it's the best staple to just always have around, right? Like, you should never not have pasta in your cupboard, I feel like. Yeah, it never goes bad. I always think there's a cauliflower in but there's What one. should I heat the oven up to? Uh, 450. 450 for the oven. We'll just do it hot. Someone said pasta is so bad for me, I'm diabetic. But we're going to make chickpea pasta. I feel like that would be better if you're diabetic. I feel like it's that is all better. It's glycemic. It's full fiber. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then after this, guys, I'm going to be on Lindsay's live IG. Show I know. It's like <laughs> double takeover day. <laughs> and did you start that? You, did you have plans of doing that? Or did you do it strictly because you were at home and couldn't do her? Uh, the latter. <laughs> um, just because I've been at home and I can't tour and Lauren, I was like, I'm going to go crazy if I don't do anything for months. Yeah. And so, yeah. So I decided to like, just get a, a show that focuses on positivity, things that people are doing during their quarantine, talk to all my friends. You know, yeah. it's just been... Okay, how much cauliflower do we need? Well, here's the thing. I think that... Is it a big head of cauliflower or small? It's really big, yeah. It's big. Then maybe let's just use half of it. You can save that other half. Okay. For another and time. how small should I... Does it matter? Mm, it doesn't really matter, but not too big of florets because we want them to cook fairly quickly. Okay. It looks like someone from your Lindsay L. fan page is here. I know. They're the best. They That's have cool. been signing on... Lauren, I've been doing so many Insta Lives and playing, you know, for different things. And all of them have been signing on, watching me play <laughs> the same songs. <laughs> I have the best fans in the world. Yeah, I mean, if you're a fan of someone, you never get sick of hearing the same songs or, you know, you just want to... Do you? I guess you don't. I guess yeah. my favorite artists, I could hear them sing the same songs over and over again. Exactly, exactly. That's fun. So you've been having fun going live and just chatting and yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It's like, it's crazy that it's day 68. Oh, you've been keeping track. I've been totally <laughs> keeping track. Cause I'm like, I'm going to see how long this goes, how my mental state changes throughout this whole thing. And so, yeah, I've been keeping track. And uh, it's crazy that it's been 68 days. Well, take me through that. Like, at the beginning, like, would you say you were more, like, I guess, what are the emotions that you've been going through, the ups and downs? I, at the beginning, so I was finishing my record. Mm. And so I was, um, I was actually finishing it remotely with my producer. So I have a little studio in my house, and I was, like, 
recording vocals and guitar parts and then sending them to him. And then he would work his magic and send them back to me. And so um, I finished my album in quarantine, which was pretty wow. crazy. But for the first few weeks of quarantine, I was so busy. I was working 16 hour days, just trying to get the record done. So um, while everybody was like, I have all this extra time, what am I gonna do? I was like, I have never been more busy. Mm. <laughs> but, um, but then it, it started to like sink in to more of like a regular quarantine about a month ago. And, um, and yeah, I've just been, I've been cooking a lot. It's been so nice to like cook in my kitchen every day. Cause normally we're on the road so much. I mean, last year I was, we played 235 shows. I was gone for 280 days. So, um, so yeah, it was a lot. Okay. Here's all my cauliflower. Is this okay. Enough? That looks, that looks amazing. Yeah. So do you have a baking sheet out? Yep, I do. I'm and do you normally just go, I, I normally go right on the baking sheet, but it looks like you've got, oh, look, you're so prepared. I have parchment paper. Is yeah. That okay? okay. Yeah, do it. Okay. So just put it on. I season it once it's on the sheet. Okay. You just go right on the sheet? Yeah, and then I like put oil and stuff, and then I use my hands and I just toss it. I like it. That's what I do. <laughs> Well, you're the expert, so at this point, I'm listening to you. I'm coupling you over here. Okay. All right. So, so let's season this up good. What's in this? The water's on boil, yeah? Like you got it on? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, someone's calling it cauliflower carbonara. I mean, it could be kind of carbonara-ish, but I don't know if we have the right ingredients. So let's – what do you have for spices? I'm thinking like garlic powder and or onion powder. Check. I have both. Pepper. Yeah. Maybe some, do you have any smoked paprika? I have sp smoked paprika. Let's do some smoked paprika. I also think we should Can do you say a little... crushed red pepper? Do you like spice? Yeah. Let's put some crushed red pepper, sure. Okay. I think something like oregano or thyme. I have both. Thyme? I love yeah. thyme. Thyme. Okay. Can never have too much thyme. <laughs> <laughs> In so many ways. <laughs> I know. In so many ways. Okay, that's pretty good. And then just salt and pepper. And whatever oil you like to use for roast. I love it. What oil do you normally use? I usually use something like for high heat, like avocado oil is good. Mm -hmm. Olive oil will work if it's just like, a, like extra virgin I don't usually use on a high heat. But if that's all you have, we can use it. I have coconut oil and olive oil. I have this olive oil cooking spray, and then I just have olive oil in my pantry. Yeah, no, let's use the liquid version. Yeah. Get a good coating. Okay. Yeah, let's just, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just go right on the sheet, and I, like, drizzle and throw the spices on. Okay, so just, like, drizzle? Yeah, drizzle, drizzle. And that looks, that looks that good. good. Yeah. Okay. And then, is this how you cook? Do you eyeball things or do you just like, how, what do Girl, you Girl, I eyeball things. I'm such an eyeballer. Yeah. I don't this is measure good. much. <laughs> Especially for stuff like this. It should definitely just be an eyeball. Yeah. A feeling. <laughs> so, okay, so in eyeball, do I just go? Yeah, just go. So what's that? The garlic? Garlic powder? Yeah, I feel like you can go like kind of heavy on the garlic. On that. Okay. Yeah. Heavy. Okay. The smoked paprika, you can kind of go. You have a shaker. I see you have a shaker. So like, how many shakes is it? I do have a shaker. <laughs> yeah, if Be you know. Not as like generous. You... Yeah. You can tell me if I'm going in the wrong direction. Oh, I guess I should show that you. That looks that. good. That looks good. Okay. And then the thyme, usually with thyme, because it's usually big, I crush it on, like I rub it between my fingers. Oh, I like that. But sometimes it's just like big chunks. Yeah, they're like, they're like. Yeah, that looks right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is that enough? Yeah, I think so. You can more tell when it's on there. Okay. There she goes. And then what do we say? Salt and pepper, and then you can toss it with your hand. 
salt. I'm a big pepper. getting my hands dirty person in the kitchen. I love it. Also, I feel like you really have to feel your food. <laughs> Physically. Yeah. Like, and emotionally. It's different if you're using a utensil to coat something. It's not the same. You have to, like, feel it with your hands to know if it's ready. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. Okay, a little salt. Okay. I think we have... Should I add some crushed red pepper? Well, a little, or we could always just add it into the sauce. Yeah, we'll add it later. Because okay. I think... Oh, you know what I didn't even think about or asking? You have a blender. You make smoothies, right? I sure do. What kind of blender do you have? A Vita Mix. Oh, okay. Right. Mix. So we're, we're good okay. to make a cauliflower cream sauce. Okay, I forgot to even... I have this stupid thing where I just assume everybody has that. Hey, my blender is my best friend. Thank I you. use it multiple times a day. I know. Great. So we're in good shape. So yeah, in order, just for people watching, if you're going to make some kind of cream sauce, a Vitamix is usually the best or like a Nutribullet high powered blender. We'll get it very smooth. And then we can just throw that in the oven. I'm going to guess it's about 20 minutes. Okay. I'm going to wash my hands. I think that's good, but I'll show you. Okay. Approve. I feel like I'm a student and you need to be my teacher and Approve my work. Well, people have told Jay and Arden said I'm a good teacher on this, so that was nice. Yeah, that Amazing. looks perfect. Okay. Okay. The thing is, going is we can always when we make our sauce and everything, we're gonna we we can add more seasoning. We have plenty of options for seasoning. Plenty um, of yeah. options to correct my mistakes. Okay. No, not mistakes. Um, we need some pasta. Yeah. How's that water doing? It's It was on low, so I cranked it up. Oh, yeah, get it right up there. We, we could even maybe put a lid on it, might go faster. Oh, yeah, it probably would. Do you like chickpea pasta or I guess I have Well, you're eating it, so or... I don't care. <laughs> okay. Or lentil pasta? I guess it doesn't matter. Are they like pennies? I'm picturing a penny. Yeah, they're pennies. Yeah, I don't know why I pictured pennies. So, yeah, whatever kind of penny you get. All right, we'll do chickpea. Cause I feel like it's going to be a very healthy pasta dish. I like it. Full of fiber. Full of fiber. So you've been cooking more, but have you been trying recipes or are you just kind of? Yeah, I've been try I've been like trying random things. I tried like some really good veggie burgers that I made out of like sweet potato and had like flaxseed and walnuts in them. Cool. They're really good. Um, you had a picture of you holding that cookie. That looked pretty good. It looked like a Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I. What were those cookies? They were like oatmeal, raisin, chocolate chip. Those and I've been good. experimenting with, like, using things like bananas and applesauce as your, like, wet ingredients. Yeah. Within yeah. the cookie. Yeah. To, uh, I don't know. I've just been experimenting. Yeah, no, <laughs> been like, I did well, like a, yeah, bananas. I love baking with bananas. They're like the easiest yeah. binder. Yeah. And it's like a natural sugar. Yeah. And yeah, it was, it was they were five ingredient cookies. Sweet, yeah. They're so easy. They look um, okay, how much pasta should I put in? Just enough for. <sighs> yeah, like, I don't know. Are you, do you want to have like leftovers? Sure. Yeah, so like two servings worth. I don't know if that's half that box or the whole box. Can yeah, you see the box? I guess that would how many, be. What do you mean, how many grams is the box? Mm, 227 grams. Oh, I do the whole box. Really? No. It was already open. Oh. So it's like, should I? So it's like half full? I feel like yeah. it's the whole thing. Okay. But if you think it's not going to fit in the pot, don't do it. Oh, no, it will. But don't add it until it's boiling. Why? Well, it should I, be right. I always put well, – I always am – I'm not okay. patient. Do you? And no, it, no, no, no. I need to learn your right way of doing it. I mean, it doesn't it. really matter, I guess. But I, do you find it sticks when you do them? I, I don't think so, but I probably don't pay enough attention to it. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't I'm matter. here to learn. Okay. 
It is boiling. Okay, I'm gonna throw in the whole. It's box. mostly boiling. Throw it in and put some salt in the water too. Do you know that? Uh, I do remember that, but I see. I forget all these tips. You are such a great teacher. Why it do you put makes salt the in the water? Pasta tastes better in the end. Like it, it just. You're still gonna salt your food, and you know I'm no, I don't like overly salty stuff. But salting the pasta just makes it taste better in the end. Okay. So this cooks for probably ten ish. Yeah. 10 minutes? Yeah, sometimes those bean pastas take a little longer. A little bit longer. All right. Well, now we've got idle cooking time. So wash the pasta. You're going to probably have to stir that a little bit. Perfect. Cauliflower's in for 20. And then let's get, do you have your blender handy? I do. We're going to need that. And let's just, let's get out everything we're going to put in this sauce. So I think we're going to put maybe like one of those cloves of garlic too. I love uh, it. I don't have nutritional yeast, but maybe some of meat that coconut aminos would make. I like, I love coconut aminos. I cook yeah. them so much. Makes everything tasty. You know, I don't use coconut aminos, but you don't? it does taste like soy sauce, doesn't it? It does, yeah. <laughs> It totally tastes like soy sauce. Yeah. I just use soy sauce or tamari, which is Japanese soy sauce. I love tamari. Sometimes I try to eat gluten-free, mm. which it's hard to find gluten-free soy sauce. Gluten-free tamari is common. There is a gluten-free tamari by Sanjay that's really good. That's what I use. Mm, I need to yeah. look for that. Now, wait. I know we went and had a vegan lunch when you were in L.A. Are you fully vegan? Yeah. Yeah. I've been eating... I've been eating fully vegan for about over a year. Yeah. I'm sure people were wondering. I saw someone ask earlier, so I wanted to just ask. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, it's crazy. I thought it was going to be so hard on the road, but it's not. Yeah. It's like, as long as you kind of plan ahead, like if I'm going to be in the middle of, I don't know, a place where I know we're flying in and there may only be barbecue for catering and stuff like that. I'll just like bring snacks and yeah. plan. But, um, but it hasn't been that hard. And the greatest thing is I have another vegan in my band. My bass player is also vegan. Oh, good. Which makes so it guys. so much better mm -hmm. because then I would never fuss to be like, Oh, I need a separate meal. But now that he's in the band, I'm like, we need some vegan meals. <laughs> yeah, it's good to be on a team with someone else. So yeah, you're not like the one making everyone like, well, I, yeah. that's what happens at the beginning is you feel bad about being like this bother or this like inconvenience like socially, but. You totally do. But over time you get over that. <laughs> I know even with friends at dinner parties and I've gotten over it a lot, but even at the beginning, I was just like, oh, I mean, don't fuss for me. I can just eat sides or whatever. And now I'm just like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you make it work for you. Yep. Um, that's nice to hear. Okay. And what you actually were on a bus for some of your tours. So how did that work? You guys could just mm -hmm. stock your own groceries, obviously. It's really nice. Yeah. Because we did a lot of flying last year too so sometimes we would fly somewhere and meet the bus on the road but um but we'd go to the grocery store on the road sometimes or if we're leaving from nashville obviously we could you know i'd even prep meals and bring them yeah oh that's cool. um yeah and so it's so nice having a bus because then you can at least have a fridge and bring your own mm -hmm. food and mm -hmm. um some buses even have like little mini stoves ours didn't have a stove but we had a microwave, I guess, in a pinch, but it's still just nice to have your own fridge. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, microwave can be handy. You can you can now get all kinds of like vegan burritos frozen. That's yeah. so true. Come yeah, on, you know. <laughs> yeah. You can't have eggs being vegan, right? Yes, correct. To holes. Correct. Yeah. That was one of the hardest things for me to cut out a year ago. Cause I used to eat so many eggs. I loved breakfast and I used to eat eggs all the time. And I felt so much better when I cut out eggs. Yeah, yeah. I used to eat them all the time too and not realizing I was allergic to them. Then I got this food allergy mm. test and they're like, Whoa, you're allergic to eggs. And I was like, Oh, that's why 
That's why it was a problem when I ate That it. makes so much sense. I know. And it's just like, I don't miss them anymore. Mm -hmm. And then what about cheese? Like some veg focus is asking if you have any vegan cheese in your fridge, but do you, do you dabble in the vegan cheese realm? So it, I go through phases. I do, of course. I mean, cheese is like one of the greatest gifts of life. And going fully vegan, you're like, whew, I'm going to need to figure something out. And always people would be like, I don't like vegan cheese. I actually love vegan cheese. There's so many good kinds. And the cool thing about being on the road is you can go to so many different grocery stores. And in different states, they, you know, get stuff from different farms and stuff like that. So I've tried so many different kinds of random vegan cheese just because of where we are. Yeah. Um. But I don't know. I go through phases of, of where I'm also in this quarantine. Lauren, I have no control. So if I have like, and not that vegan cheese is bad for you, but if I buy like a lot of something, I will just sit there and eat it. Like I got vegan cream cheese last week and I was eating like, I don't know, these lentil crackers with vegan cream cheese as like every meal. For a couple oh, of days. And that's I'm like, well, what I do regularly. You have a problem. You <laughs> need to stop. So, yes, I love vegan cheese. I just don't buy a lot of it because I just, yeah. I have no control. <laughs> I eat that all the, well, I get this, like, cashew cheese. I feel like it's good because it's fermented, so it has probiotics in it. But, it's, yeah, it's fatty. But that's, like, I would take vegan cream cheese like that and crackers for dinner over most things. <laughs> I know. Like, I think the vegan cream cheese I got was cashew-based as well. Yeah, so that's and fine. It's I think so that's better good. than the more, like, processed kind. Right, 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 right. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. sometimes you read the ingredients and it's like, there's a lot of stuff in here. Mm -hmm. Or they can be, like, really salty or whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, how's, our, how's the pasta looking? It is, uh, it's boiling away. Okay. It's looking good. Okay. Well, where did I leave off? Chili flakes, coconut good. aminos, garlic cloves. Mm -hmm. mm, do you have onion aminos. powder? Yeah. I feel like onion powder is really good in a cream sauce like this. Love it. Uh, what else could we put in it? I think it's going to be fairly simple. I'm thinking, like, my best things. We don't have any fresh herbs. You know, I have some fresh basil. I'm in the process of trying to grow some rosemary over there, but um, oh. no, I don't have any you fresh have herbs. What nice. are fresh herbs that I should keep in my kitchen? Mm, what are fresh I herbs guess, that you keep in your kitchen? Well, I always buy, when I go grocery shopping, I buy cilantro. Cause I oh, have I have cilantro. I have cilantro and parsley. You have parsley? I feel like parsley would be nice with this. Okay. Yeah, those are actually the two I usually buy all the time because I put a lot of that on salads, on everything, because it just gives it a fresh taste. So I almost think like everything I make, I put either one or the other or both on top. Always. That's so funny. Yeah, gosh, I, I don't even really think of parsley. and Well, I use parsley, but I buy cilantro every week because I put it in smoothies. Yeah, it's so good in like smoothies it's or juice. Yeah, so good in... So I, I just buy it so much that I don't even think, how much parsley do I need? Do I need more than this? Probably. Uh, <laughs> I, I like a lot. Okay. Like a little bit. Like more. how much is a lot? Well, I just a little bit more than that. And then I usually just take the base stem off, like the, the tougher stem, but you can chop up finely, like the, the soft stems like in the center. Much? Yeah. Okay. So if you need to wash that, wash that, and then we'll just chop it up really fine. We'll wash this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like growing up, we didn't have a lot of cilantro. Um, but I love it now. Yeah. Like, some people hate it, obviously, because they have that weird thing where it makes it taste bad. But if you love it, then you absolutely love it. And it must be in everything. <laughs> it's like become one of my favorite things. I love that you put it in smoothies. I know. And it's like a really good detoxifier. Yeah. So, um, okay, so cut off these. 
and don't use cut them. off those like compost or throw those out because those are a little tough but all the middle stem you can just all chop everything fine okay yeah yeah there's a lot of people in the comments saying they hate cilantro tastes like soap smells bad this is like some genetic thing i don't get it. it's so weird but i think it's also like a, an acquired taste because I wasn't really into cilantro growing up and we didn't really eat it a lot and now I'm like obsessed with it yeah yeah but there are people who have this make mega aversion to it and they say it's some type of gene you don't have a certain gene or something oh right 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 I have read that yeah and they people say it smells like feet or soap or dirt it does that have a bit of a wonderful. dirt taste, but I like it. I like the dirt taste. I like it, too. Actually, now that I remember, like, 23 and Me is one of the questions. Yeah? Like, because I guess that makes sense if you have the gene for it or whatever. I just did one of those. Have you done that? Yeah. It's so fascinating. Like... My favorite part was answering all the questions, like the research questions. Like you don't even have to do that. But I was, I spent like three hours one night answering all the research questions. I know there's so many of them. Wow, you did all of them. I did I a lot of them because I got sort of, a, I got sort of addicted to like the questions. Maybe it's because I'm yeah. like, maybe because I'm like narcissistic or something. <laughs> no, I I love stuff like that too. Yeah, it's like a quiz or something. It is like a quiz. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, it was oh. so stressful, though, like, when they are, like, do you have the variant for this kind of disease? And you're, yeah. like, looking to, like, click to the next screen. Yeah. Before you drain the pasta, Lindsay, make sure you save some pasta water, because we'll blend that with the cauliflower. Okay. I think. Or we might use some milk. I don't know. Love it. Right, someone's saying, how about lime? Well, I don't know if we'll put lime juice in here, but we will need some kind of, do you have lemon juice? Yeah, I have lemon. We might need a little bit of lemon in the sauce. I guess we'll just squeeze this into something. Yeah. Just probably only like a tablespoon. Okay. Your kitchen's so nice and bright and clean. Oh my gosh, it hasn't always been this clean, but... When you're home, yeah, you can. You, I actually have time to clean it. Like, what else are you gonna do? Honestly, yeah, that's so true. I just want to answer this girl's question, Michelle. Is vegan diet good for diabetics? Yes. Well, you should do some more research on this, but plant-based diets have been proven to lower or reverse diabetes. Um, mm -hmm. So that's if you're eating a whole foods plant-based diet, including carbohydrates but you're eating complex carbohydrates like chickpea pasta, whole grain bread, quinoa, brown rice, you know, carbohydrates that are what are called complex as opposed to simple carbohydrates like white flour. Right. Yeah. But I'm not a scientist. You should just read up on that. But it's true. <laughs> it has changed my life. Like, yeah. it's pretty crazy. Like on a deep level. On that a deep level. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I just feel so much better. I have so much energy. My skin cleared up. I don't know. It's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, it starts to affect, you know, it does, you know, whatever the reasons are, people decide. Like, your reason, my reason might be different. But as you go through the journey, it does start to, you start realizing how holistic everything is and how it's all connected. And it starts with what you put in your mouth and it, then it just starts yeah. affecting every aspect of your life, like even on emotional levels and mental levels. And then you're like, wait a second. And it's just so funny how we ignore food and diet so much I know. as the sort of core issue of whatever we're dealing with. Right. I know when it really like food is fuel, what you put into your body. Yeah matters so much you want to try one of those or do they look raw still I think it's look pretty good i will try one you want it you know not too mushy mm, maybe a couple more minutes yeah yeah but okay. so close okay great well uh i don't want to start putting things in the blender until we have the cauliflower but okay we kind of have everything ready to go. It says two more minutes. It looks so good. All right. Is it getting color on it? 
Yeah, do you want to see it? Yeah. I guess yeah. it's hard for you to. <laughs> oh, Tiff's here. Hi, Tiff. <laughs> Hi, Tiff. I guess oh. it is hard for me to see, but as long as it's getting some brown caramelization happening. It is getting a little bit, but I can Might see. Might have to go longer then. Okay. Because it needs to be, like, pretty brown. Like, I like it with brown on it, yeah. I do, too. Yeah, it changes the taste. I, do, I agree. Yeah. Otherwise, it has a bit of that, like, phosphorus taste. I don't know if that's the right word, but, like, that gassy kind of taste. If you yeah, it, it tastes like a vegetable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But if you cook it long, it gets sort of creamy and, like, diff it tastes different. Yeah, yeah, it really does. All right, but I think once that's ready, then this will all come together very quick because i got to let you go in under an hour, right? Because you start your next show at 7? Yeah, but we have tons of time. Okay, we have tons of time. Yeah, no, but what I'm saying I'm is it's going to come together so fast. As soon as that stuff's cooked, all we'll do is blend the sauce. It should be hot already. And then that's, that's your I'm meal. I'm so excited. Yeah. So you still have tour dates up on your site. Do you think you'll, you're going to make those dates or you kind of just are waiting to see? It's, we're waiting. It's, yeah. um, it, it just, everything changes so slowly. At the beginning of quarantine, there was a bunch of stuff that moved. And now it's like, I think a lot of shows are, are holding on to the last minute to see yeah. if they can happen. And then a lot of them end up being canceled. So for the most part, I don't think there's going to be many shows in 2020. There's a couple of things in the fall that still may happen. A couple of festivals that have been talked about that, that may happen, but, um, but I, I don't know. It's so crazy Lauren to like, not be gone. I'm so used to being gone all the time. Like that's well, what I do. Yeah. That's a different, you, you live such a unique lifestyle that way. Oh yeah. So let's go longer. I wonder, should we turn the heat up? Sure. Should I broil it? Yeah. Why not? Really? We'll just get it cooked. We'll get it cooked. We'll just have to watch it closely if you're going to broil it. I know. <laughs> I've, I've made that mistake many a time. I always say. Be like, oh my gosh, it's black. Yeah, no distraction when you're broiling. <laughs> Full focus. You cannot forget. I know. I know my mom growing up would always say, you, if you broil, you need to leave the oven open. Because then you remember that you're broiling. Okay, sure. I'm try another one. Oh, yeah. Parchment paper in the broiler is dangerous, someone said. Oh, yeah. Well, just watch it. Once the, you, the paper will start browning. You'll be able to tell before it lights on fire. So Totally. <laughs> yeah. Then we call 911. That oh, would be God, so no. eventful. Knock on wood. Pass is done or no? I think the pass is done. Okay, so get a cup of water out for me. Okay. Before you drain it. Like a mason jar? Oh, anything. Yeah, just like, okay. you don't even need a full cup of the water. Maybe like a half of a cup. So why do you like to use the chickpea? Why, I, I guess it tastes well, pa better. Yeah, using pasta water is good because it's starchy. So the starches are in there from the pasta. And then it'll just help thicken, um, you know, the sauce. Or in this case, we just need some liquid to get the sauce blended. So we, I'm thinking we might use it. Or you said you had non-dairy milk, so we might also put that in the, in the blender. I don't know. Yeah. I have hemp milk or coconut milk. Yeah, I feel like coconut milk. Is it very coconutty? Whatever. Yeah, we're gonna. It's okay. Yeah, we're gonna add so much seasoning. It won't matter. I think coconut milk is thicker. I'm trying to make the sauce like because cauliflower has no fat in it, we do need to add in probably a bit more olive oil, the coconut milk, just to add fat. Otherwise, it's not gonna taste good. Okay, this is far enough. Yeah, that's <laughs> way more than we need. But like, just so okay. perfect. And then just drain the pasta and kind of leave it in the sink until we're ready. Perfect. Whoops. Oh, I should be watching. Watch the broiler. <laughs> Watch the broiler. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Yeah. See, this Would is so want... unfair because you don't get to taste anything. You don't get to smell it. You don't get to. It's still browning, but. Okay. okay. Yeah, I feel like we can get way more color on that. Yeah, me too. Okay. I mean, I could move it to the top rack. I mean, then it'll really go, right? Yeah. Is that dangerous? Just make sure that the edges of the paper aren't like, do you have a gas one or an electric one? 
I have an electric one. Okay, then you should be fine. It's more dangerous because yeah. I have a gas one and there's actual flames on the top. Oh my gosh, that is dangerous. Yeah, yeah. so if the paper's like too close, then that would be bad. But if you're electric, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be bad. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Oh, great. Just just a little longer under their broiler there and we should be good. This is so amazing. So what made you come up with the idea of doing a show oh, going show? into people's pantries? and fridges and then cooking something on the spot well on my channel i do a series that i've done from the very beginning called recipe which is what it's like recipe with a question mark and an exclamation mark and it's just because when i cook i just do what we're doing like i just throw stuff together right Right. But because I'm a recipe developer, I also have to write it down and keep track of it. But I liked the idea of just doing videos without having to like test a recipe in advance, just like start the video ah. and like see what happens. So because I've been doing that for years, I've gotten really good at it and got a lot of practice. So I thought, you know what, I should be going to people's homes and doing this. So I was going to go to people's houses and do this, but then I got one episode shot and then this whole pandemic happened. So I was like, oh, well, goodness. I guess I'll just do it on IG Live. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it with friends or like celebrities. Like, yeah. Not to totally. say I won't do it with just like people that follow Hot for Food. I probably will. But for now, I've just been kind of like, yeah, like, from my own I love the one you did with your boyfriend. That was so cute. <laughs> that was the first one because I was wanting to do it as kind of an experiment to see if people were brought. Yeah. And they liked that one. It was so awesome. So he's stuck in Canada? Yeah. Girl. We think he could get down here now, but we're going to wait till the border officially opens, which I think is the end of June. Okay. And I think, you know, other silly things like healthcare, like they're not covering COVID right now. So, yeah. Totally. So we're kind of going to wait and see. I mean, I think it's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. That looks good. Yeah, so. Yeah, are you happy to pass it? Or we can put it in for longer. It looks pretty good to me. If you want to taste it and see if you like yeah. it. Because we're going to blend some, but leave some on the pasta. Okay. Or like stir it in whole. Let's taste it. Yeah, someone's talking about how the parchment paper max temp says 425. Mine always says 450, but I don't listen to it and I do it anyway. <laughs> It's so good. It's good? Okay. Well, all right. Let's do this. Let's get out the blender. Dang, that's good. Okay. Blender. Tasty? Like it's got enough seasoning on it? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we can put more seasoning in the sauce, but... Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to make it nice it's and good. tasty, tasty. Okay, so how much cauliflower goes in? Okay, just so start shoveling it in. Okay. And let me see, like, have in your blender, one. you've got that nice narrow one. Oh, I love that one. Like, this is going to look so weird. I don't know. Just start putting it in, and I'll tell you. Okay. Hopefully, I have good aim. I'm thinking almost half of what's there, and then half will leave whole. Okay. And maybe, like, one more scoop, like what you just did. Is that about right? Yeah. Yeah. Love you it. like that? Love that. Okay. Okay. Then let's put in some of the coconut milk. Coconut milk. Get that. The pasta might get stuck together, but it'll be fine. We're going to heat it up in the pot afterward. Let's stop. Everyone's, everyone likes to chime in about the process. <laughs> I, like, I can you imagine. You're pasta? like, I am the teacher. Let the teacher teach. <laughs> We're all backseat drivers. Okay, how much coconut milk? All right. I would say, like, fill it to, so that it's, like, halfway up the cauliflower. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then add, like, a, okay, then add a bit of the pasta water, but, like, half of what you did for the milk. Okay. Just like a splash. Bit more. Okay, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's good? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Then garlic clove? A garlic clove? How big is it? Yeah, it's right I have there. two yeah. tiny ones. Yeah, do that. Okay. Then um, lemon juice? Yep. Yeah. And did you already squeeze it? 
I did. So it's just, I squeezed it into here. Okay, add half of that to start. Okay. They don't want it to be too lemony, and we might add more after. Okay. Uh, can you add more olive oil in there? Yep. Remember, I said we have to add fat. How much olive oil? <laughs> you just go you and add more. You. Yeah, more, more, more. More? Yep. More. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> I love it. More. Keep going. Uh, onion powder? Onion powder, yeah. Like a teaspoon and a half? I have a shaker, so I just go, okay, I teaspoon and a half. So, like. Yeah, yeah that's good. <laughs> and then do you have brown it. pepper? Let's put lots of pepper in there. Oh, yeah, and a pinch of your chili flakes which you can always adjust if you want it hotter after. Okay. So pepper. Yeah. Making a cauliflower cream sauce. Amazing. Okay, pepper. Is that how much pepper? I couldn't quite see, but. Sorry. Mm, sure, you can always add more after. Sorry, that's you good. cannot see any. I'm a yeah, it's terrible hard to see because of the pixels, but that's okay, that looks good. Okay. And then add a little bit of chili flakes. Yeah, like just a pinch. And if you want to add more after, you can, because I don't know how much spice you like. Yeah, that's good. Pinch. Pinch. And then... Parsley? Uh, I think the parsley's going to go on top. On top, okay. Uh, coconut aminos? Yo, yes, I forgot. We need that, yep. Okay, how now, much does that, do come you out, think? does that come out fast? Uh, it, it's okay. Like just shake it in. We're going for about a tablespoon. Okay. Oh, yeah, it goes out slow. It goes out really slow. Okay, that's good. Okay. Let's start there and blend it and see what happens. Okay. Because we might need to add a pinch of salt also, but we'll see. And then I, will I need to muddle it with this? I don't, I don't know. think so. I think it's just going to okay. go, but let's see. Okay, it's going to be nice and loud. Oh, yeah. Was it too thin? Okay, you want it to be very smooth. I'm worried now it's a little too thin, but that's okay. We can thicken it I know. in the pot. We can thicken okay. it in the pot. Uh, okay. Okay, you want to, like, yeah, take it off and taste it and make sure it's smooth. Okay. Yeah, it's not it smooth. Looks, if it's not thin. smooth, keep blending. Maybe I... um added too much coconut milk. Actually, it, looks, it smells good. It'll thicken in the pot. That's really good. Is it, does it need more salt or lemon? I feel like it needs, um, maybe a little bit more lemon. Okay, salt and acid for sure. Okay, should I add a pinch of salt? Yeah, how do you feel like you can taste the coconut aminos or not? No, I don't feel I like more, I think more coconut aminos okay. because it's more umami tasting, and I think that'll also add salt and that umami mm, taste. Okay. For people watching, this is also a sauce. If you didn't have coconut aminos, you could add miso paste would be good in it. Miso paste is the best ingredient ever, Lindsay. Really? <laughs> I think I put it in like if you like tahini dressings, putting miso and tahini together is so good. Really, I love tahini dressings. I cook with tahini so much. Yeah. Actually, we could add tahini into this. Oh, really? For fat? Well, okay, we don't need to. I don't know. Blend it. We could though. Okay. Make it thicker. Add like a tablespoon of tahini. The best part okay. is I get hungry watching these videos. I know. Or like it's being not... part of them, I get hungry. <laughs> it's so good. That's a lot better. It's a lot better? Okay. Yeah. And go like this with the spoon and show me how thick it is. Like, It's actually thicker than I thought. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Okay, I do think we should add a tablespoon of tahini. Okay. I think it will help. It will benefit her. I is love tahini so is much. Is it garlicky enough or do you taste the onion powder? Maybe a bit, bit more onion powder. Okay. 
Yeah, it could have more onion powder. Yeah. And how's the temperature of it? It's not hot, right? From the cauliflower? The milk was cold, I think. No? It's it's not hot. Is it's it supposed to be? No, we'll we'll heat it in the pot okay. and cook the pasta in, yeah. Okay, so a tablespoon of tahini. Yeah, that looks good. And then okay, just blend that, that in. And then a little more onion powder. And if you want a little bit more heat, you could add more chili flakes. I mean, it's pretty good on the heat. It's like okay. just enough, I think. Okay. So uh, someone was asking how we know each other. We know each other through Tiffany Theo Patch, who's watching. She is our friend, but also our publicist. But our publicist. Yeah. And so our motivator and inspiration and just well around amazing human. Yes. Amazing female mentor. Yes. Okay. We're going to. We're going to blend this up. That sounded like a good blend. It sounded, it sounded good. It felt, felt like a good blend. Yeah. And I have to say for everyone watching, the blender that Lindsay has is my favorite, the old one. That's perfect. Isn't that better? It's a little silkier. It is. Wow. <laughs> the tahini really, yeah. Okay. Now make sure it tastes good and you think it's good. If, if not, we can... Oh my gosh, it's so much better. Okay, yeah, needed fat. Wow, that's so good. But it's cool because the cauliflower is starchy, so it's interesting. It's like how I make my cheese sauce with potatoes and carrots. When you blend starch like that and you whip it, it, it just tr changes. This is probably some scientific thing about the molecules of how the starch is. When it whips it, it just makes it creamy. That makes so much sense. It's so exactly. Good. The, the new wider barrel of the Vitamix, yes, sucks for sauces. You have to make like a big amount. So this narrow one that Lindsay has is my favorite. I know. I've had this one for years. Yeah. It is the old one, but it's so good. Oh, yeah. So now, uh, is the pot you cooked the pasta in, it looks kind of small. Uh, it's, pretty, it's a pretty big size. Okay. So let's put the sauce in there, put on low heat. With the pasta or without? Start just with the sauce, because I want their sauce to be warmer before we add the pasta. And here's where, if the sauce starts to get too thick as it's heating, you can always add a bit more pasta water in the pot. Oh my gosh, that sauce is so good. I feel like I'm, Sorry, I'm rocking back making and forth Alfredo I'm sauce. Everyone, does someone say, stop rocking back and forth, but it's because I'm like just sitting here, not doing anything. <laughs> I know. Sorry. Okay. So it's, no, it's in not your pot. pot. Okay. On low heat. Or yep. medium low heat. We just want to get it warm so that your dish is warm. And then once that gets to like a, a, a nice temperature, then we'll stir in the pasta, stir in the cauliflower. All in the pot? Yeah. We coat everything in the sauce. Easy. I love and it. Then, um, and then we'll even add some parsley in and some on top at the end as a garnish. Okay, so it's starting to bubble a little bit. So does that mean it's getting hot? Yeah. It's more like, yeah, there should be some bubbles happening. Okay, they're like, well, there are big bubbles happening. <laughs> yeah, okay. So let's add the pasta in. The pasta. And actually, you'll have to tell me if you think the ratio of pasta to sauce is good. Because I can't see. I know. I wish I wish no, I had okay. a camera that like <laughs> Serenity now. Yeah guys, when I think I rock, I'm thinking, I'm like mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. Everybody's saying that you Yeah, it's fine. Everyone has something to say. <laughs> okay, I'll put the camera. Okay. Oh yeah, that looks good. Okay, and let's add the cauliflower in. Is that I have a little bit more pasta, should I add I think it? you should put it in, yes. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Now it's perfect. Okay. Now so with the cauliflower, add save some pieces of cauliflower also for on top because I because I like putting it on top so you can see it. Here. You're like so the presentation queen over here. It totally matters. <laughs> Man, I wish I was eating this with you. This looks so good, Lauren. Oh my goodness. Okay, so. Well, I saved a few pieces. Yeah, just for the top. Okay. Oh, yeah, and throw in a handful of parsley in there. Like how much? This much? Yeah. Okay. 
I should have flipped this camera around the whole time. This is so much easier. <laughs> I feel so gourmet right now. I'm Jeez. normally so just simple. Just like, nah, I'll roast some vegetables. Yeah, that's why I was hoping we'd do something that was just a bit more involved than what you normally do. Just because, like, maybe this will give you an idea for future or something. I don't yeah. Know. That looks really good. It looks, does it look hot? I think it's ready to plate. It turns. Yeah. Hot. It's I can totally. See the yeah. Okay. I'm going to plate it. And that looks good. Like you have some leftovers too for tomorrow. Right. right? Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's great. And then put the, put some more roasted collie on top. Just like sprinkle it on top. Yeah. And then just a little bit more parsley and then maybe just a little bit more ground pepper and you are ready to go. You're so, you're such a good teacher. Mmm, <laughs> that looks del Okay, the cauliflower is the perfect roastedness. Really? Yeah. It was the, the broiler, I guess. Yeah, it's those brown edges you want. Mmm. Okay, there's that, and then we'll get a little bit of black pepper. Yes. There we go! Woo! It looks so delish. It looks so good. Okay, now it you have so to good. eat it for us and tell us what you think. Okay. It satisfies all the Here things. <laughs> oh. My goodness, the roasted cauliflower, it's like just crunchy enough with like the cream sauce. I wouldn't have never thought to like do a cream cauliflower sauce with roasted cauliflower. I would just would have put it all in one thing. Yeah. But the combination between the two, like the creaminess of the sauce with like the crunchiness of the roasted cauliflower is amazing. It is so good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to eat it. I'm going to have to make that one now. It's so good. What I've been doing with some of these, and I'm a little bit behind, is, like, I just did the kale pesto. So we made a kale pesto in another one of these episodes, and then I, like, developed it properly and wrote I it out. That. Yeah. yeah. So this is one for sure I'm going to do. And I still have to do the one I did with Jan Arden. With Jan Arden, we made kind of like a mac and cheese. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. love it. It's like quarantine any kind of pasta that you could dream of. <laughs> yeah. And like using what you have, using something in a different way, like using cauliflower in a different way, I think is, is yeah. Cool. And this is like good for people that can sneak vegetables into their kids, like pasta or something. It's you so know. good. It tastes like Alfredo sauce in a, it, in a way. Yes. It's amazing. so good. You're amazing. Oh, I'm glad you like that. Thanks for cooking and best letting teacher us into, ever. Well, thanks for letting us into your home and your kitchen. So um, thank intimate. you so much for coming into my home and my kitchen. I mean, guys, this is so good. Woo. I love the way it looks. Uh, me too. <laughs> Someone said Lindsay can do pasta now. <laughs> mm. Right? Finally. Finally yeah. I can. <laughs> She's eating a chickpea pasta. Is there anything you want to tell people watching? Like if they're other than watching your IGTV. So is it every, what day is today? Do you do it every day or every Tuesday? I do it every Tuesday. Yeah, like me. Great. Yeah, every Tuesday night. So you can always watch Lauren's cooking, invading people's pantries and creating miracles in their own <laughs> kitchen. And then come over and listen to me talk to interesting people. Yeah, and get and get enlightened and positive and make magic. Exactly. They're both magical <laughs> times. Um, thank both you so magicals. much for doing this, Lindsay. Thank you so much for having me. This is so fun. Yeah, and I look forward to when this is all kind of over and you're back in L.A. and we can hang. I cannot wait for that. <laughs> okay, enjoy your dinner, and I'll see you in a little bit. Thank you so much. This is delicious. Okay, enjoy. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys.